Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, rulers, shields, desolate shores, peasants, vassals, minions, meat sacks. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. Yeah, man. Today we're going to talk about Yemen. And um, I've done a, a video about this uh, previous, previously as uh, Yemen collapsed. The government there collapsed. And at the time, the Houthis uh, had taken power. And uh, the country shifted from being essentially a Sunni-run country to now being a Shia-run country. And uh, the implications... Uh, being on the border uh, with Saudi Arabia and shifting from Sunni to Shia and having this chaos there uh, certainly portends that at some point Saudi Arabia uh, could get involved. But in the meantime, we have uh, pretty dramatic events there. And uh, once again, uh, ISIS uh, uh, taking uh, advantage of uh, the situation, uh, this chaos, thriving in chaos, and perhaps another uh, franchise of ISIS will be declaring itself in Yemen, and this is what's happening so far. So just previ just like previously in Libya, uh, when the ISIS first announced some presence there, um, I was skeptical because it was only a handful, but it, since then it's spread rapidly, so we're seeing this franchise be extremely successful. And now with the uh, declaration of these new uh, suicide bombings in Yemen as a part of ISIS, announcing their presence uh, in Yemen. I have to take it a little more seriously now that we could find uh, this develop into an ISIS presence in uh, Yemen, which certainly uh, complicates things in that region even more. So uh, so what we have in these recent events, we have these uh, suicide bombs go off um, in the capital uh, at Friday prayer. And right now, uh, even though the figures have been all over the map, we supposedly have 137 killed. 357 wounded, so uh, nearly 500 uh, killed and wounded in this attack. So a very uh, loud announcement of ISIS presence, uh, if, if, if this is true. And then uh, we also have, uh, oddly enough, uh, airstrikes on uh, the president's palace in southern Yemen, where uh, that president has fled. Uh, so a lot of uh, heavy equipment is already in the hands of uh, uh these rebels, these Houthi rebels. So that's very impressive. And then we also have uh, the U.S. abandoning uh, the base there, including a drone base, uh, and 100 uh, U.S. soldiers or thereabouts. I've done videos previously about uh, U.S. military presence there and uh, the U.S. war in Yemen uh, that has been ongoing. But now we have uh, U.S. troops uh, getting the fuck out of Dodge uh, because things are getting so bad there. And, in fact, al-Qaeda is taking over this southern region now and uh, as I brought up in previous videos we have a quite the dynamic going on in Yemen a country that uh, is uh, conjoined used to be three uh, three separate countries is now one and there are forces in play that want to split the country up and uh, and then we have this uh, dynamic between the Sunnis and Shias uh, uh, there which which just just shifted as I mentioned previously and then we also have uh, Al Qaeda elements uh, struggling there, and um, and supposedly one of the more uh, uh, consolidated uh, Al Qaeda uh, groups you know, operating in the region right now. And um, so quite the uh, quite the uh, clusterfuck, as I, I want to say, off more and more often these days, uh, going on in Yemen. And uh, we have uh, the Houthis have uh, taken over the capital, and now nine out of twenty-one provinces and and, and, and and just like in all these other situations uh, once again we have a, a vast amount of US um, uh, arms uh, military equipment falling into the hands of what are now Shia radicals uh, in Yemen uh, there's a story I'll attach below I'm sure everyone's seen by now that 500 million dollars in US donated equipment uh, including a lot of sophisticated weaponry uh, is now going to be in the hands of either Al Qaeda in the south, taking over U.S. military bases, and um, also the uh, Houthis taking over all the uh, government uh, forces. And uh, and then we still have, of course, government forces in play in Yemen, uh, adding to uh, layers and layers of, of, of bloodshed and confrontation between different groups. Uh, another thing that we see in, in Yemen that is also reminiscent of what we've seen Elsewhere is, of course, the uh, Ye Yemeni army uh, trained and equipped by the United States for quite some time now, uh, just dissolved in the field. 
in the face of uh, this hoodie onslaught. So it doesn't take much uh, to defeat these uh, these uh, colonial uh, armies that the United States uh, sets up in, in all these regions. And that's been historically true um, throughout history. I mean, we saw it um, even in Vietnam. Uh, at the time the United States left South Vietnam, I think they had the third or fourth or fifth largest uh, military in the world uh, trained for the United States for over a decade and equipped with all the modern weaponry and the minute the United States was uh, gone uh, they uh, dissolved in the field. So uh, so anyway, uh, and then we're going to have all these bases seized all over Yemen so there's going to be more and more arms flooding there so uh, it, it could very well uh, turn uh, into another Libya. It's well on its way and w once again um, just like I discussed with uh, uh, Libya, uh, presence of ISIS and the, and the uh, symbiotic relationship between the arms and jihadists in Libya and the uh, uh, ISIS movements in the rest of the Middle East, we also have this symbiotic relationship between Yemen and uh, Libya with the same uh, flow uh, of trade routes, it, as it were, of arms and jihadis going back and forth between Libya and Yemen, so this will only exacerbate the situation. And uh, and also, just to add a layer of humor to this, if one can find any here, is uh, uh, just like uh, Libya was once touted as a NATO uh, uh, UN um, American success in 2014, of course, uh, uh, Obama, uh, I believe in the State of the Union even, uh, touted Yemen as a success story of no boots on the ground and fighting the war on terror globally and um, we see the results of this uh, failed policy yet again. So uh, so here we go, we have no reason to doubt that uh, um, given the fact that we have a massive chaos uh, and, a, and a power vacuum with the fall of the government and a dissolved uh, American proxy army in Yemen, we are going to see this uh, situation in Yemen uh, get further uh, strained and chaotic and uh, we will see ISIS presence probably more and more as the time goes on. And of course, should that happen, uh, I can almost guarantee that there will be a Saudi Arabian intervention. Um, there's probably one being planned as we speak. And there's there's a lot of talk that this uh, confrontation in Yemen is a proxy war between uh, Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia. And I suppose that's true to a certain extent. I know the uh, Iranians are, are known to uh, supply arms, uh, just like all the other bad actors in the world, supplying arms to all these hot spots. And Iran is a, a, another contributor to this, and uh, and certainly uh, they could be uh, fueling uh, proxy forces there uh, to undermine Saudi Arabia's uh, southern neighbor. But uh, I, I feel that's a, a little overemphasized. But uh, I guess it all depends on your perspective. Uh, so anyway, uh, as if there's not enough players with their hands in this cookie jar. ISIS in Yemen. Yeah, man. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too.